Hi, I'm Dr. Carl Sabatki, and I'm excited to present work on convolutional network identification on Medtronic Strata BP shunt valve settings with skull radiographs. This work has been a collaboration between myself, Mark Greenhill, Dr. Mushtak, and Dr. Becker. We have no disclosures. Instead of searching for online reference drill reading a study with a VP shunt, the goal of our study was to train a neural network in order to automatically identify shunt valve position for Medtronic Strata 2 VP shunts. This is a visual comparison of the different PL shunt valve settings, and these diagrams show how shunt valve position impacts the VP shunt function. We developed our AI training pipeline based on the checklist for AI and medical imaging guidelines claim. However, we encountered multiple challenges. Manual labeling was necessary before training the neural network since not all radiology reports identify the specific shunt valve position in the report text. Also, due to our PACS transition, the data was split across multiple PACS and each image had to be manually extracted. We initially created a small 127 radiograph data set to assess feasibility, and then expanded to 584 cases in our study, which is still very small for AI training. The data was split into training, validation, and testing subsets. The neural network models were developed using PyTorch and FastAI. The radiographs were resized to 300 by 300 pixels and cross-entry loss was used for model training. Multiple CNN architectures were evaluated in our training of convolutional networks, particularly DenseNet 169. We investigated both the complete radiograph field view and cropped images as model inputs. Class activation maps, as seen here, were used to assess the reasonableness of the model predictions. Extensive image augmentation was used to counterbalance the very small data set size that we were using for AI training. We also used an additional strategy for model training called mix-up. This involves combining images with different weights linearly, and it has been discussed in the AI literature as improving performance by creating a different curvature for the optimization. However, we did not see significant benefit for using mix-up of the inputs during our model training. Notably, when assessing one versus one models, there was significant performance variation in that some classes trained very well against each other, resulting in high accuracy, while the models struggled to learn how to differentiate other subsets of classes. This table shows the one versus one performance for each class combination. Notably, while accuracy is acceptable for some class performance subsets, ultimately we deem that the current performance we have been able to achieve so far is not high enough to be clinically acceptable or warrant model evaluation on a reserved testing data set. Now, since this was a very small data set by AI standards in that many AI modeling studies will use hundreds of thousands, if not millions of images for training, the performance is still quite promising overall. However, we need to acquire significantly more data in order to develop a clinically acceptable model. Our future directions are to possibly recruit collaborators across multiple institutions or to generate additional radiograph data using phantoms. Also, as AI techniques continually improve, we are keen to continue experimenting with novel image augmentation techniques and new model variants. Thank you.